Auxiliary power unit start comes in. DLT, three gray top net. Copy. Pilot Tom Hendricks reporting that the auxiliary power units look good. The systems will be activated in 30 seconds at T minus five minutes. These auxiliary power units provide the power to the hydraulic pumps, which control critical tasks like the mo movement of orbiter elevons, the rudders, the speed brake, the landing gear, and the main engine thrust vector controllers. Mission Control has just transmitted a signal to start Columbia's onboard flight recorders. Genesis go for orbiter ATU start. DLT OTC perform ATU start. ATU starts and work. Yes. And CDR reconfigure heaters. CDR and work. Test conductor Mike Key has given pilot Tom Hendricks the go to start the auxiliary power units and Hendricks has flipped the proper switches. Commander Steve Nagel has reconfigured Columbia's heaters for launch. It's four minutes, 30 seconds away from liftoff of Columbia and the Space Lab B2 module. APU starts complete. Copy that. T minus four minutes, 14 seconds. The final purge sequence of Columbia's main engines will begin. Test of Columbia's flight controls is now starting. The engine should be being gimbaled. Also during this time, the aero surfaces, such as the rudder, elevons, and speed brake, are being cycled through a program test pattern to verify that they are up and ready for launch. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Columbia's main engines are now positioned for launch and pressurization of the external tank is underway. T minus three minutes, three seconds and counting. Momentarily, the retraction of the external tanks, gaseous oxygen vent hood should begin. Clear caution warning, memory, and verify no unexpected errors. Turn the fault. The gaseous oxygen vent hood is being retracted away from the external tank. And orbiter test conductor Mike Key has requested Tom Henricks to clear the ship's caution and warning memory system. That task is reported complete with no anomalies. T minus two minutes, five seconds, and counting. Flight two, OTC. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow and have a good flight. Good work and thank you very much. Jealous is go for EP, LH2, pressure Z. The astronauts have closed their flight visors on their helmets in preparation for this morning's launch. Replenishment of liquid hydrogen to the external tank is also being terminated and Columbia is disconnected from all ground fuel loading systems. T minus one minute, 30 seconds, and counting. One minute, 30 seconds. T minus one minute, 15 seconds, and counting. The ground launch sequencer is now verifying that Columbia's three main engines are ready for ignition. The heaters around the joints of the solid rocket boosters are being turned off. In another 15 seconds, we'll get the command for auto sequence start. Jealous 
go for auto sequence start. We have a go for auto sequence start. The baton has been passed from the launch control center computer, and Columbia is now in charge of its own launch countdown. T minus 20 seconds. Columbia's vent doors are being moved and configured for flight. T minus 15, coming up on a go for main engine start. 12, 11, 10, T minus 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Solid rocket ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia on a big to the future. Go, go, go. burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. That comes at about two minutes and four seconds. SRB separation is confirmed. Columbia is now 20 mi 29 miles from the launch site at an altitude of 173,000 feet, traveling 3,000 miles per hour. Columbia, performance nominal. Performance nominal. Columbia, two-engine banjul. Two-engine banjul. Performance thus far in the mission has been as expected, and Columbia can reach banjul of the TAL site in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three engines are still performing at full throttle. Three good hydraulic systems and electrical systems aboard Columbia. The orbiter is now 55 nautical miles downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 248,000 feet, traveling 3,400 miles per hour. <laughs> 